All right, here we go. I'm going to go over this video that I just recorded. I uh, did a run so I could focus a little bit better and explain what's going on. So this is the semi quick easy guide to the whisper boss from desert treasure 2 if you're watching this video you've already completed the quest and you just want to sesh it out and get some drops here's a quick video uh basically just get your best mage set up so i'm gonna play this i think i need to mute this actually so showing best mage setup that you can um make sure you bring the blackstone fragment you're not even able to start the fight without it so obviously you're gonna have it you will be using it during every special phase of the fight, which I'll go over once it uh, happens in the video. Um, you're going to want to bring a Trident of the Swamp or some other weapon that attacks pretty fast, especially if you're using the Shadow, because it attacks too slow for one of the um, one of the special phases it has. You have to kill two uh, ghosts, and if you don't, you take a bunch of damage. So if you have the Shadow, I would recommend bringing like, a Trident or something just for that phase. Other than that, you won't use it. You might be able to bring darts, I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure I did at one point, but I think just use the trident to be safe because it has a better range. Um, bring whatever food you want, anything. I recommend bringing a one-click teleport out because as soon as you lose your sanity from messing up too much, you're going to die. So you want to teleport out pretty quick because you die really quick. So bring that just in case and run in. So off the bat, you've already done the quest before and you fought the boss, but it's completely different from what it was in the quest, at least from my um, opinion. And so on the first phase before his first special, he'll do three attacks. And every time he does the attack, it will be the same um, three in a row. So like that, it goes mage, 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 range, range, range. And then so you're just watching to see what he attacks with. And then you're just going to pray against three of his attacks in a row. And make sure you move sideways after every attack because those water attacks will come out. As you can see, I'm going to pause it. I'm standing pretty close to this back wall here. That'll actually make it so there's only two waters that come at you. Because if you were standing out here, you'd have four coming from the every angle here. Um, another thing to, to mention when you're stepping away from that attack. Um, if it's coming from north, south, east, or west, you're going to want to step diagonal. If it comes from diagonal, you'll want to step north, south, east, or west. You'll see it when you're fighting it. So make sure if it's coming diagonally, you move forward. If it doesn't come diagonally, you move diagonally to avoid it. And then just keep DPSing the boss until his first special. So here's the first one for me. It is an orb phase, and that's the first one you're going to click on your black fragment here, which is going to show you these green balls. Uh, the light green ones you're going to want to step on. Don't step on the other ones because they'll hurt you for like 15 damage or something each when you step on them, and you'll lose sanity. Um, Similar to some TOA mechanics, you're able to step diagonally over these, or over them in general. If you're standing one tile on this side, you can actually click from here to here, and you'll step over the middle one without stepping on it. So with these, you can click here, click here, click here, click here, click here, click here, and you'll get all of those without stepping on any of the other ones you'll see here. You want to be kind of fast because as you can see the boss here has this this bar going up you want to make sure you click on all of them before it gets all the way up or else you'll take damage um related to how many are left over i'm pretty sure it's relative to that so if you only leave like a few like one or two you'll be fine you won't die but you'll take a little bit of damage and your sanity will go down a bit um if you do this one quickly and in enough time you'll see your sanity gets up by 15. So if you take damage during the fight and you run into that phase your sanity can actually be increased by completing that one just a good thing to know. So here I want to talk about something that's actually really important that I haven't seen anybody explain. After every special attack, the boss will uh, entangle you and he'll come over and try to melee you. So after every special, it's important that you should run as far away as possible and spam click away while the boss is walking toward you. Then you won't get meleeed because if you let him in melee distance, whether you're praying melee or not, he'll hit you for 35 every time, every tick. So you can die really quickly. So I just recommend after every special to just run away and keep spam clicking away. So after the first special, here he is again attacking. This time he'll do two of the same attack and then one of the opposite attack. And then the same water. So pray against the first one you see. Let it hit twice and then switch prayers. And continue on until the next special. I'll just let it keep playing out here. I'd play with audio, but I was in Discord at the time, and I had a friend join, so. Let this play out. The Shadow is actually really, really good against the Whisperer. 
So here's the second type of special, and this is the obelisk slash pillar phase thing. And it's kind of similar to Zebek with the uh, rocks, except you have to move after each one breaks. So click the black stone fab fra uh, fragment again, excuse me, and you'll see the HP here. Um, important to understand is that you don't want to stand at the healthiest one, because if you do, it will get destroyed. So what you want to do is you want to stand optimally at the weakest one and then move to one that has like a middle health like this and then to the big one after that. If you start too far on one end, you won't be able to get from this end to the other to protect yourself from the uh, blast that he does. So the best case here is to stand at this one, stand next to one of these, and then go over here. But sometimes his destructive ability here will destroy these ones all at the same time. Sometimes you get screwed and he'll destroy all your pillars. And you'll just have to tank one. But if you do it right, you can actually get him to destroy specific ones. So stand at the weakest, move to the second weakest, and then move to the strongest after. So for here, I stand here because one of these will probably still be alive. I meant to move over there, and then I didn't. But these two survived, so I could use this for the second blast, and then the third one over here. And then, like I said before, make sure you run away because he's going to entangle you and try to come melee you. So I pop a shot off there just to get a little bit of extra DPS. But he entangles, comes over, tries to melee, and the second you can move, like four ticks later or so, looks like six ticks, um, he'll start attacking again, and then you complete the cycle. And right now it's the same amount of attacks with the same uh, pattern as before, because I think it goes by a percentage of his health. So he'll change the attack style when he's under like 30% or something, you'll see. But I think it has to be after a special. I don't think he can change in between each special. So we'll see here. He's going to switch to another special here because he's at 30%. And this is the final special. Um, he brings out these ghosts. So hit the black fragment. Um, equip your trident or other fast attacking weapon that isn't the shadow. And you're looking for these two ghosts right here, the ones that say Vita. They're yellow. Kill both of them and you won't take any damage on this phase. Otherwise you take like 70 damage or something crazy. So kill both the Vitas and then run away because he's going to entangle you right after. I'll pop a couple shots off at him here just for extra DPS. But make sure you step away when he actually entangles you. He gets a little close for comfort here, but I don't get meleeed. And then here we are on to the basically second to last phase. Water is still the same, but his attacks are different now. So it's going to go... Either major range first, and then it followed by the other attack style back to the original attack style. So make sure you're changing your prayers um, correctly, or else your sanity can drop pretty low, taking a bunch of damage. And if you're trying to eat, prioritize um, prayers over eating, to be honest, because eating's not going to save you when your sanity is zero. That's why you should just keep your HP high while you can. That's the only mistake I make here, I'm pretty sure. And then once you get him down to 0%, or 0 HP basically, he will get 100 HP and enter in an enraged phase. So here he is. He just got 140 HP. Um, what he does here is he throws two attacks in a row. So he'll do two ranges or two mages, and then he'll switch to the other attack style. So he'll throw two range, two mage, two range, two mage, over and over and over again. So every time you attack, make sure you're switching your prayer to the opposite one. And keep running left and right, because he keeps doing these very, very rapid attacks with the water. If you keep running left and right after every attack, you shouldn't get hit by any of these, unless you run into a corner. So make sure you don't get too far to one side. Just stay somewhere in the middle here and finish the kill out like that. I'll show it again, because it's kind of a lot going on. Just make sure you're moving and praying against his prayers and then click on him when you can. Don't focus too much on DPS here. As long as you're staying alive, you're good. You won't take any damage. And there you go. That's how you kill a boss. Um, I think the hardest mechanics for people to understand was that the black fragment in your inventory is actually useful. Uh, people get confused on the ghost phase because they don't know what one to attack or what, they're, what to even do on it. So you can technically take like zero damage on this boss. That's what's kind of nice about it compared to some of the other ones. But that's just a quick guide, so thank you for watching.